Hey all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren, and today we're going to do just something just a little bit different. I'm going to do a whole chicken, not spatchcock, not cut up. We're going to actually do it whole, sous vide, and then we're going to put it on the Kamado Joe Jotisserie. So, haven't done this before. There's a lot of speculation, a lot of uh, fear about doing a whole chicken sous vide. But we're going to take the uh, worry out of it, and I'm going to show you how in just a minute. All right, guys, we're back. And what I've done, I just took the chicken out of the package, give it a little quick rinse off. And please don't tell me not to rinse my chickens off because I've never had an issue with it at all. Um, one of the first things we're gonna do, since I said we're not gonna spatchcock this, we're not going to um, cut it in half or cut it up into pieces before we sous vide it. Is I am going to tie it off so I am going to take these so I'm going to take these wings I am going to put them in the back and I am going to tie them off and I am going to tie off these uh, legs so I do have a little bit of butcher's twine here and I am going to tie these legs off tighten them up just so that they can get tight together all right come on now come on chicken Get them. I just don't want them uh, when I get them on the rotisserie to move around so I'm going to tighten these up and tie it off just so we don't have a lot of movement that can balance when we're throwing it on the rotisserie later because this is going to go on my Kamado Joe Jotisserie so I don't want them moving around okay so I got the legs and I'm going to also try to keep this these wings pinned back so I am going to tie them off together here as well just so that they stay where I want them to stay there we go Just give me enough twine so I can get a good knot here and that's it we're just gonna tie them off just so they don't move around too much when we get it on the rotisserie and that's it now I'm gonna season it up and we're gonna get it in the expandable bag and then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with that so I'll be right back all right so I'm gonna season it up today with uh, some of the running wild poultry seasoning and I'm gonna go ahead and just not put a ton on it because one of the things we are going to use to make sure this cooks all the way through during the sous vide is we're going to put a little of the chicken stock in the bag. And what that's going to do is allow that stock to heat up just as much as the water and cook the chicken inside the bag. Because you will have this cavity in the chicken that would be full of air if we didn't do that. And it would be hard for it to cook the chicken. I'm not really too worried about it since we are going to put this on a rotisserie after. And um, it's still going to get cooked to full temp. So I'm not too worried about that. If we were going to cook it normally just, um, just to crisp the skin up, I might. But we're going to, we're going to put this on the rotisserie. I'm going to actually put this in um, the tail side down. And just slide it. I'm using my expandable vacuum bag just so I make sure I have enough room. What it's also going to allow us to do is when we put the uh, stock in here and we go to vacuum seal it, it's going to give us plenty of room to get this vacuum sealed without it going up into the vacuum sealer. And I'm going to show you up close how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to put about maybe a cup and a half to two cups of. Um, stock in the bag so I'm gonna do that and I'll bring you back and show you how we're gonna vacuum this up all right guys I'm gonna show you a little trick that I usually do if I have uh, liquid in the bag first off I'm gonna add just a little bit more stock to this bag because I need about two cups and since I got it in the bag it kind of looks like there was a little short still 
But one of the things I do when I have liquid in the bag is I will actually hold the bag over the end, edge of the counter and let gravity kind of help hold the liquid down. And while I vacuum seal it, I hold the chicken over the edge of the counter. And then I actually have the vacuum sealer going just until I start seeing liquid going up into the vacuum sealer. Then I go ahead and shut it off and then hit the seal bar and let that seal up. And since we're using these extra wide bags, as always, I double and triple seal those because we have that pleat. So just a quick little trick. If you're using liquid in the bag, doing it over the counter really helps and works real well. Alright guys, I got the uh, chicken out of the sous vide, as you can see, still got plenty of juice in there. Does look kind of pale looking. I'm going to go ahead, get this out of the bag, get it on this uh, pan here, and we're going to try to dry it off just a little bit, and then we're going to put a little bit more seasoning on it. Alright guys, well here it is, I mean it actually looks pretty good. You know, even though it looks kind of wet, waterlogged a little bit, you know, the ties held and I tied it up. So, doesn't look too bad. It smells pretty darn good. So, I'm just going to go ahead and sop up a lot of this moisture here. Try to get some of it out of the cavity. The skin is kind of translucent. But we're going to try to crisp that up when we get it on the jotisserie here. I got my fire all going already. It's actually up to temp. So I'm going to go ahead and put <clears throat> just a little bit of my, my own uh, chicken rub on there. Because that's got a little bit of uh, salt, pepper, garlic. But it's also got some paprika. So it's going to give us a little color. And I'm going to probably hit it while it's spinning on the rotisserie. I might hit it with a little bit of duck fat. Just to see if we can get the uh, skin to crisp up just a little bit more. So, alright. I'm going to go ahead and get the skewer on. And we're going to get it on the rotisserie. So, I'll be right back. Alright guys. I'm just going to show you here. Chickens are pretty easy to put on the rotisserie. Because you pretty much just um, find the cavity that's already open. Just shove it right through. I kind of want to make sure my skewers go through and hold it really tight because I don't want this um, flopping around when it gets on the rotisserie. That's why I tied it up. So you don't want it flopping around too bad. So make sure it's on there really tight. Make sure your skewers are tight because you don't want your skewers to come loose. And there it goes. I'm probably going to put just a little bit more seasoning on it while it's rotisserieing there. So, all right, I'll see you guys outside. All right, guys, my temp got up to about 375, which is great. I'm going to go ahead and toss a couple pieces of cherry wood in there to get a little smoke flavor. And then we're going to get the uh, rotisserie on the uh, motor. Make sure you adjust it to get the uh, chicken right in the middle. You can do this right when you put it on with no problems. We're going to turn it on and add just a little bit more seasoning that, uh, where some of it had uh, come off when I put it on the pan. But that's it. Getting this thing going, it'll be great. Now well, guys, it's been about 25 minutes and it's starting to look pretty good. Doesn't look like I'm going to need any of that duck fat at all because the uh, skin is still pretty juicy looking. But it is looking like it's starting to brown up and crisp. Some good golden color on there. So I think I can leave it on there another 15 minutes or so. It's not shrinking up so it's not losing any moisture. So I'm going to leave it on there for another 10 or 15 minutes and then we'll be back. Alright, well, let's see what it's looking like. It's been on another 10 minutes or so. That's looking pretty darn good. Skin's still kind of wet, but it's getting golden and crispy. 
I think I might just give it another four or five minutes. It's not looking like it's drying out at all. So I'm going to give it a few more minutes while I got some other stuff cooking. And then we'll be back. I'll be taking it off, cutting it up in just a few. Well, there you go, guys. Right about four, four and a half hours in the sous vide, and then about 45 minutes on the Jotisserie. The temp on the dome was reading at about 375 the whole time. But it might have been a little bit hotter than that right down there by the uh, fire. But skin came out pretty good. Um, it's still kind of rubbery it looks like. But it's got a nice color to it. I'm going to cut right into the breast here. And get a piece of the breast meat. Let's just see how that turned out. Mm, it's pretty tender that's for sure. It's coming right off. We get a piece of that skin. Very juicy, very tender. You can tell the juice is just still running right out of that breast. Woo! Coming right out. All right. Mm-hmm. Very tender. Very juicy. It's done all the way through. Got all that flavor in there. I don't know. Came out pretty good. Yeah. I'd do it again. Um, you can tell that um, cooking it sous vide kept it a lot more moist. So, all right, guys, that's it. Great. It came out great for the first time doing this as an experiment. I suggest you try it at least once. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Follow our group on uh Facebook. We have a pretty big group that does sous vide and barbecue. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Hey all, I thought I'd take the time to uh, answer a question. I get this all the time in my Facebook groups and sous vide groups. When you cook chickens like this sous vide and then put them on the barbecue, due to evaporative cooling, the chicken internally will not heat up as fast as if you were cooking a raw chicken on the grill. That's why I can put this chicken on that's been cooked to 40, 146 degrees and then not dry out and get overcooked. I can put it on for 45 minutes to an hour. All it's doing is crisping the skin and rendering the fat that's under the skin. So evaporative cooling is how that happens. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and I'll see you on the next video.